This is Digital Health Today, episode 41. Oops, sorry, for this episode, we're actually Smack Health Today. Stay tuned to find out why. What the heck kind of name is that? Welcome to Smack Health Today, the podcast focused on the leaders, innovators, and technologies transforming healthcare today and tomorrow. Find us online at digitalhealthtoday.com. This episode is brought to you by Medible, the app and analytics company for healthcare. Medible invites you to try its Axon solution. Axon makes clinical research easy with its clicks, not code technology. Create your first clinical trial app in just a few minutes. Go to www.medible.com to get a demo today. That's www.medible.com. Welcome back. This is Digital Health Today, the place to be to get the insights of leaders working to make the healthcare of tomorrow available today. I'm your host, Dan Kendall, and this is episode 41. This is part two of the conversation with Matthew Holt of Health 2.0. In episode 40, Matthew shared his experience as a health tech researcher, beach bum, travel blogger, health tech entrepreneur, and then health tech catalyst when he and Indu Sabaya started Health 2.0 in 2006. That organization has grown massively with conferences all around the world, and this October marks the 11th anniversary of the annual fall conference. In fact, if you haven't signed up yet, you should definitely check it out. Their summer savings ticket is still available through September 6th, so go to health2con.com. That's health, the number two, con, C-O-N, dot com, or visit the show notes of this episode at digitalhealthtoday.com slash 41, and you'll be able to go over there and check out that program and register for the event. In this episode, Matthew's going to make his case for rebranding digital health as Smack Health. And while I don't like the sound of it, it sounds a little painful, I'll keep an open mind. Let me know what you think. Is Smack a better description for what we're working on to innovate in health? We also take on some of the questions regarding the acquisition of Health 2.0 by Hims earlier this year, and Matthew shares his views on the role of Amazon and other big players in the delivery of healthcare. He also shares some of his own ambitions for himself and proposes a new joint venture with Eugene Borakovich of Bayer, and it's one that I guarantee you would not have guessed. Now let's pick back up on the conversation with Matthew Holt. You've just talked about one of the questions that I had, and I think a lot of people have, which is the Health 2.0 conferences are so, they've been so unique. They're excellent networking events because they're big enough that they have a big draw and they attract a lot of people from all around the world. I mean, I met Unity Stokes when he came over to, to Barcelona and Rafael Grossman and Omero Rivas and so many people who have come from all over the world to attend the European event. And you have such a great style and form of the event where you are able to profile and dive into a lot of different technologies with the way you have it set up with a a presenter and then uh, several people on the sofa there on the stage with you asking questions of the entrepreneurs or the innovators who are developing this new science or technology. And I think a lot of people are concerned that with the HIMSS machine, which is a huge organization that's had a lot of impact all around the world. I mean, it's decades old. It's over 50 years old, I think, that that perhaps Health 2.0 and the, the form and function of it will be sort of enveloped into it. And you're telling me here on the record that that's not going to happen, that Health 2.0 will maintain its flavor and style and, and stand out from the HIMSS organization that way? Yeah, so Steve Lieber, who's the CEO, and we obviously talk with Hal Wolf, the incoming CEO, has been very explicit that they you know, what they, they view Health 2.0 and the same way we, we do it as doing two things. One is being out there on the innovation edge, finding the new stuff. In the, I mean, HIMS has tended to be kind of, you know, at the pace of the mainstream, and the mainstream has, has, has its issues, and we can you know, discuss that separately in terms of, you know, most of the tools being used by mainstream uh, EMR vendors are still not cloud-based, are still, uh, are, are still you know, very focused on the enterprise, and there's a lot of stuff going on in that world that continues to go on. Um, so we, our goal is to go out and find the new next thing, and Health 2.0 has always tried try to do that. So we've added in things that weren't around 10 years ago, such as you know uh, some of these diagnostic tools on the phone, some of the 3D printing stuff we show, some of the virtual reality you know, stuff we show. You know, well, yeah, yeah, a lot of things that are that have come that are a long way beyond the types of tools that we we showed. We showed, you know, when we were first showing search engines and, you know, patients patients uh, talking to each other online. So 
our goal is to continue to be the the, the leading edge and, sh- and show the stuff that's on the leading edge and show what the wacky 22 year old is doing and that kind of thing um our style has always been to show the live technology and that freaks out a lot of people like we always, we still get a lot of whining of people saying i can't possibly demo this thing in four minutes and the answer is yes you can we can help you do that um but our style has always been to sort of show a lot of the live technology as part of the content of the program. Um, we think that's more interesting than just showing PowerPoints or showing, you know, case studies of something that got put in two years ago. That's again, a, a style that, that, that we've done. And that's again, something that I think that the folks at HIMS um, like and want, want us to, you know, it wouldn't, it, they wouldn't, wouldn't make sense for them to have acquired us if they just wanted to turn us into them, right? They need to keep that, that separate piece. So I think that that, you know, I can be on the record of saying we'll keep that style going. The goal is very much to keep the brand um, independent and to keep the uh, the style pretty much the same and hopefully keep the experience as great for the people who come, the, the, such as the way you've enjoyed it, had that networking come, have great um, outside presenters come, but also show the new, the cool new things that new technology people are building, you know, throughout the whole process of running Health 2.0. And we've tried to do that globally and we'll continue to try to do that. Yeah, it's such an important role that Health 2.0 has had during this whole I mean, past 10 years or so, 11 years since you had your first conference because, you know, HIMSS, their, their meeting, their annual meeting in the States is massive. I mean, what is it, 35,000 people or so attend that event, and they've got the Cerners, the CSCs, you know, the Microsofts, uh, the Epics, everyone comes to that, you know, of all sizes, but it's really dominated by a lot of the big brands. And Health 2.0 has always been very open to the person or two with an idea and a working demo and something to show and something to talk about, you always have an open call to those sorts of companies and individuals and innovators to come up on stage and, and demonstrate that. And, you know, I've met a lot of interesting people when they've come off the stage at, at your events, and I'm sure a lot of other companies have benefited from that opportunity of getting up in front of whether it's 700 people in Barcelona or 2,500, 3,000 people in Santa Clara, you know, that that does a real service for that group of innovators and entrepreneurs yeah i mean the, the the point is dan is that there's a lot of that's always been our goal right which is that there's been a lot of activity whereby literally i've had stories in the past of people of ceos of what are now well-funded companies saying my demo went down then it came up like two minutes later and i was able to be the last guy on the panel and someone in the back of the room you know was it at and i had been in the meeting the week before or was it you know wherever um at united or at uh, cedar sign or whatever and you know called their friend and their friend called me and said i hear that you've got a good thing that might fit our thing and you know that kind of conversation random connection happens um and we've actually institutionalized that this year we actually have, you know, added a a, 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 a proper matchmaking s- session between small tech companies and predominantly providers because we think that we need to do lots more of that sort of care and feeding of the ecosystem. Um, and and uh, that's called Market Connect Live, and that's happening uh, at our full conference and will probably happen also at HIMSS North America, and we'll continue, maybe we'll try to do that in Europe as well. We'll, we'll see. The the But the goal there, of course, is to, is to put, you know, people who've got, these types of tools and new ideas and new uh, technologies in front of people who might actually be buyers to actually get that, you know, show on the road. Um, the, the, the one other thing that's worth mentioning is that HIMS didn't actually acquire another part of Health 2.0, which we call Catalyst at Health 2.0. Catalyst is a group that runs innovation programs primarily for governments. Um, we don't, we, we, run one for New York City, where we, it's called the Digital Health Marketplace in New York, which has a lot, again, does a lot of introductions between small tech companies and calls for small tech companies to come and meet large, tends to be provider organizations, but can be health plans and others within New York City. We've done a similar one in India, funded by uh, IFC, the World Bank, um, which we're in discussions to, to, to go to some other parts of the world now with. And, and that's the same sort of thing, which is, you know, getting international tech, uh, tech companies to come and meet folks in here and start doing, you know, pilots and business. There are currently, I think, 22, sorry, 18 pilots that we're running that we're administering in India between small to international tech companies and Indian hospitals. We've done a similar things for foundations and for, um, for ONC. Um, we've also in that group do, we run a small number of codathons. We also run challenges and competitions 
which is the same sort of thing where you put out a call, you know, we just did one for Pfizer. We're doing currently one for, for doing one for AARP um, on the subject of caregiving, where we're putting out a call to people who are developing tools saying, hey, if you can build a really cool tool for caregivers, or in Pfizer's case for metastatic breast cancer patients, we can, you know, we will run that in car competition for them. They'll fund it and they'll fund a prize. So that group, that catalyst group, that actually didn't get acquired by him. So that's uh, humming along independently. Um, and that's got a whole bunch of, uh, it does some market research and some other stuff as well. But but uh, the overall goal of, you know, the reason that basically Indu started that group back in 2011, 2012, was because we, sorry, 2010, 2011, was we felt that there was more we could do with that developer community, that community of small companies to, to, to build more things and have more solutions rather than just put them on stage. So that's been a, a, a great a great area where a lot of those companies have taken part in comp- contests, won competitions, have been part of these digital health marketplaces, have gone on and done pilots, and again, have sort of expanded their influence on what they can do. Um, and we've kind of been a, a, a facilitator of that whole piece. Well, you, I appreciate you coming on the show with me here, Matthew, because I know that you have been very vocal about your dislike of the very title of this podcast, Digital Health Today. <laughs> I know it goes against the grain for you to even come on to something that is talking about digital health. And that's because you have another moniker that you've given it. And can you tell us what that moniker is and help give the explanation about why others should pick up this new name for health technology and innovation? <laughs> So about two years ago, someone wrote me an email I think they were from India or somewhere saying, blah, blah, blah. What about the use of smack, you know, in healthcare? And uh, and I think actually somebody over at Chilmot, one of John uh, John Moore's researchers used it. You, you wrote, an art, wrote a small piece about it as well. And uh, I was scrambling around because like Lisa Soon, Lisa Soon wrote an article a couple of years back saying that the term digital health is wrong. Here's the problem with the term digital. Uh, health, Dan, is that is that maybe we should just call it health tech, and not not call it anything. But the problem with digital health is that it, digital just means it's on a computer, right? Which means it's which includes all that enterprise stuff. And if you go look at the guts of what's going on in the uh, Epics and Cerners and everything else of the world, all that technology that was being was dragged slowly through the 90s and the early 2000s and given a huge flip by meaningful use and now put into every doctor's office and most hospitals in America. It's still basically client serve enterprise technology that most enterprises would recognize from, you know, better part of 20 years ago. And most enterprises now, you know, it's basically got replaced by what is now SMAC, right? So what is SMAC? SMAC is S for social ad sensors, so social and sense, social technologies and sensors. Uh, M is mobile operating systems, the growth of obviously iOS and Android as, as core underpinning operating systems for how most people approach the internet. A is analytics. Obviously a lot of that's to do with big data and, and online analytics and some of the underlying technologies like Hadoop and, and others that, that allow uh, you know much faster, richer processing of, of, of data. And C, of course, is cloud, which is the underlying place where we store and do the computing um, rather than sort of the on-premise stuff or on, the, the on, on laptop, on computer stuff. So, look, I add a K to that. I call it smack health with a K because I think in healthcare we need kindness and some empathy. But all, all I'm doing, look, at it, it's most, it, it's as much a joke and as much it's like poking it's poking the, uh, the, the the belly of the beast because everyone uses this term digital health now uh, as much as it is anything else. But what I am doing by that is saying, look, you've got to recognize that these set of technologies are distinct from the kinds of technologies that we have that we've been putting in. Right now, they're all those older technologies are starting to migrate over. You're starting to see the building out of cloud and app stores and what have you from those core technologies. But they are different. Right. And we're going to be in a messy world in healthcare where the two of these coexist for a while. And then there's another set of technologies, which I haven't even got to yet, which are starting to come out. And that's the things I mentioned, you know, everyone kind of kids about these, but it's the AI, AR, VR, blockchain, <laughs> plus uh, can I, a little, little group, which is what kinds of new technologies that we're, that, that we're going to have to adapt with. And in healthcare, we're adding a whole bunch of diagnostic technologies. Nowadays, you're going to be able to, you know, using some combination of your smartphone or sensor devices, you're going to be able to breathe, cough, 
pee, spit, or poop on some kind of sensor, and it's going to tell a lot about you, and that's going to get recorded as well. So we have these new, you know, t- technologies which are adding sort of the diagnostic part of that, which are going to be overlaid onto the sort of what's now the mainstream, the smack stuff, which is mainstream in in uh, in, in business now and certainly for consumers, and we're all on those tools all day every day, um, and is going to be more overlaid over the infrastructure that we've just laid we just put down for uh hospitals and clinicians so you know there's a lot of complexity going on here i just think that using the term digital health is just is just too vague but you know i'm quite happy to be uh quite happy to be some lunatic you know shouting from the rooftops who gets ignored so long as people are focusing on the right kind of companies and the right kind of technologies you know what, what you call it doesn't really matter well, Matthew, you're known for speaking your mind and for being provocative and, and for making people think. And some of these terms we use, you know, we don't necessarily think about the meaning behind them. But, you know, smack, I understand the, the rationale behind it. I love that you put the K in there for kindness because it, we really do need to focus around the uh, delivery and the human aspect of why we're delivering health care. But obviously – Digital health, uh, you know, I prefer the term because I feel it's very inclusive of everything from health IT through to AI. You mentioned AR, VR, mixed R. There's genetic engineering and all sorts of things that are happening that may not necessarily fall within that smack health. But I'll tell you what, Matthew, for this episode, we will rename this podcast Smack Health Today. And we will <laughs> we will put it out in honor of your vision uh, for Health 2.0 broadly and now with this new vision of Smack Health. I wouldn't be surprised if people do take it up. I was I was wondering if you were going to go from Health 2.0 to Health 3.0, but now I see you're going from Health 2.0 to Smack.Health. So, uh, f- f- funny you should mention that, Dan, because there's another group of, uh, of, dif- of troublemakers. This is the Dave Chase, uh, Z-Dog, um, Phalanx, who th- they've been talking about Health 1.0, Health 2.0, and Health 3.0 as kind of a system change thing. And, you know, they've obviously defined health 2.0 as something I don't like. It's completely different. But, I mean, the, the, the joke is so long as people are still arguing about what the definition of something is, that's good. Uh, digital health got adopted without a lot of thought. Um, definitely, yeah, people were talking about M health and mobile health, which were horrendous terms in my view. You know, we were trying to promote health 2.0, but it didn't really catch on as an all-encompassing uh, uh, way of thinking about the technology. No one's just gone health tech, which is the obvious thing to do, right, um, because – yeah, you know, we use fintech and edtech and all these other things in Silicon Valley. For some reason, health tech doesn't doesn't quite you know cross the chasm either. So uh, you know, we'll, we'll 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 find out. But but my my sense is that so long as people are uh, are having the conversation around this and people are arguing about how we're going to move the healthcare system along, uh, using technology and using new forms of organization and doing you know, a whole bunch of and there's a lot of people out there discussing that. Obviously, you've had many of them on your on your Digital Health Today podcast, or even your Smack Health Today podcast, um, it seems to me that you know we're headed, we're going to be in the right direction, because what we do know is that the status quo of healthcare is not servicing either the patients or the consumers or society or the people in the healthcare system, particularly the clinicians who are on the front lines, as well as it could do. So it's our role, and whatever our role in talking about promoting, doing you know, changing, adding, making new technologies and new services. It's our role to try to improve that situation. And the, the, the longer we can keep talking about it and keeping the, the you know, the, a little bit of, if it's fake controversy, then fake controversy going about naming stuff. I think that helps rather than hinders, but we can, uh, you know, that can be debated. The important thing is that we're all pulling together to try to improve the situation. We'll dive back into our discussion in just a moment, but I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about this episode's sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Medible, the app and analytics company for healthcare. You may have heard my interview with Medible CEO, Dr. Michelle Longmire in episode 29. Medible is a fast growing company that was just named by the San Francisco Chronicle as a startup to watch. There's a lot of buzz about this company because Medible combines deep healthcare knowledge with cutting edge Silicon Valley technology. Its solutions are disrupting the $30 billion clinical trial outsourcing market. $30 $30 billion, that's a market ready for disruption. It's no secret that clinical trials continue to grow more complex, and patient recruitment and retention are a major challenge to sponsors. Today's protocols are more demanding than ever, and frequent travel to clinical sites often discourages patients from long-term participation in studies. Did you know that 25% of patients drop out before study completion? In many studies, 50% or more visits could be relocated to a patient's home. For decades, the clinical trials industry has been saddled by legacy technology 
and workflow inefficiencies. Medible puts patients first and uses mobile tools to bring anywhere, anytime technology to improve recruiting and patient retention. Medible solutions include functionality that replaces eSource, eConsent, and EDC data entry into a study. And they can integrate with EMR, IRT, wearables, and other devices. Solutions that are powered by Medible are HIPAA compliant, auditable, and interoperable right out of the box. The Medible platform serves as the hub for the entire patient record with data spanning all healthcare systems. If you're interested in building clinical apps that patients love and that bridge the gap between the clinic to the app store, check out Medible's Axon. It's easy, it's HIPAA compliant, and it's supported by a robust platform. Give it a try and create your first clinical trial app in just a few minutes. It's true. Go to www.medible.com to schedule a demo. Now let's jump back to the conversation. Now, I put out some tweets about your appearance here on the show and asked people for some input and some questions for you. Nick Adkins of Pink Sox fame uh, wanted to know, what's your take on Amazon and their potential for entering the healthcare sector? Ooh, well, they just hired Missy Krasner, a good friend of mine from Box, who was at Google Health. Uh, you know, they they have, mm, they spent a long time denying that that uh, Amazon Web Services was to be used for, for healthcare and ended up took, taking a while before they would even sign business associate agreements. They're clearly going to make a, it looks like they're making a big leap into it. So I think, you know, the, the first thing is what can they do around uh, supporting cloud-based infrastructure for other players? That's the first thing. The second thing is, can they come more direct to consumer using some of their other tools uh, with the purchase of um, Whole Foods? And can they? Is there a pharmacy play there somewhere? So I think those two are the first two things that I expect them to see. So one would be kind of a supporting mechanism to get more technologies. It's already they're already on AWS, but to get getting more technologies solidly on that and, and, and then selling that more aggressively to the healthcare system. And the second one would be some kind of consumer play, presumably around pharmaceuticals to start off with. And do you think that they're one of many new faces that are going to come into the healthcare space? I mean, Google's doing a lot through Alphabet and Verily and things, but you know they shuttered their Google Health program some years ago. Microsoft has had the Health Vault platform, but that has sort of arguable success, and certainly it's not something we hear about on, on a daily basis. So do you think the stage is set for a big entry like that? Well, I, I, my guess is that probably what you'll see is a series of newer companies on the delivery side come in. So I think eventually what we're going to figure out is that, that, that we have got some organizations, and there are already some out there practicing, and this is very much the Dave Chase idea is that there are some organizations out there who are who are uh, essentially need help to scale up but can deliver healthcare you know using a combination of coaching and primary care and in, and, and information semi direct to consumers and maybe not a direct consumer direct consumer payment model but uh, maybe paid for by employers or maybe plans in a way that is better than we're doing now and i think those kinds of companies they're going to be bumps on the roads but supported by underlying infrastructure from people like Apple and Amazon, you know, there are going to be a bunch of, of companies which are doing that. I don't, I don't think you're going to see Amazon and Apple in direct healthcare delivery, but I might be wrong, but I, but I think you'll see other people doing that. And I think the question is, will the mainstream healthcare provider organizations that we know and love, um, will they be able to sort of turn their battleships and look more like those startup organizations, or are they going to continue to sort of feed the beast, which is the big um, you know, the, the big sur surgical lines and, and procedure lines, which are, which basically, uh, you know, are, are, are dominating American healthcare at the moment. Because if you look at how we're going to look after chronically ill people, we're not going to do it by doing more and more stuff to them towards the end of their lives. We're going to do more stuff. We're going to do more preventative stuff that's more effective earlier. And that's a very hard thing to do in the, in the current sort of organizational environment. So I think the, the big players that you talked about, they may come in directly to some aspects of this, but I think more likely they'll be supporting an ecosystem of players, of, of other players who are going to be delivering healthcare in a different way. And you're seeing some of them out there already, like Crossover and uh, um, Crossover and uh, Iora and Privia. You know, some of these direct, sort of direct primary care approaches, which are, are trying to do things in a different way. And Eugene Borokovich, our friend out in, in Germany, he wants to know, 
What's next for you, Matthew, given the sale of Health 2.0 conferences over to HIMSS or the transfer of that over? What can we expect with Matthew Holt 2.0? Oh, I think Eugene and me are going to set up a uh, are going to set up a, a beautician style um, consulting company for guys <laughs> with you know who, who need who, hairstyle in particular. I think between us, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that, for those for those of you seeing this on the seeing not seeing not seeing the visuals here, Eugene's one of the few who's got even less hair than I've got. Um, <laughs> uh, but the answer to the question is, I am committed to staying with Health 2.0. You know, as long as it keeps going which hopefully be a long time. Uh, I'm committed to being the sort of working within it to be the face of the conference. Uh, as I said, some of the behind the scenes stuff will change, but that will continue on. And then uh, hopefully in some of my other time, I will, my goal, and I know we're near close to getting there because I'm still right wrapping up the transition, but my goal is to be doing more writing and more speaking and, and more sort of a little bit of company advising. We'll see what actually happens, Dan. I'll probably be asking you for a job pretty soon, but uh, that's, that's the goal for now. Excellent. Well, listen, we've uh, spent a lot of time together, Matthew. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, I wanted to just ask you six closing questions, okay? and then we'll, we'll let you get back to your day job. Matthew, what's a saying, quote, or phrase that motivates you? <laughs> God, you asked me that. I'm feeling sick again. Oh. oh, come on. I sent this to you weeks ago. <laughs> you sent this to me weeks ago, and I thought, yes, I should think of a phrase that motivates me. Um Anything around the office that you're in that you have hanging above your uh, desk? The only thing I have hanging around my office, which is a very sweet note, which is from uh, dictated to my wife by my daughter saying, uh, Ero, Mummy, Coco, and Charlie miss you. Um, please come and visit any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, I'm motivated a little bit by trying to, uh, try, trying to uh, uh, think, think that, you know, I'm, I'm doing this not just for me anymore. Absolutely. That's a powerful force, isn't it? What advice do you have for others working to innovate in healthcare? Try not to get discouraged and try not to give up. There are so many things in your way. And I know people do that, but also be rational about what you're trying to do. So I run into people who, you know, are, are, are sort of scared to approach people. I think you can, should be very brave and, and approach people and you know, have ideas and, and, and you know, whether, whether it's in your organization or somewhat separately. I think people are very approachable much more so than you think. But I also see people who, you know, go out on the limb and take what I think are somewhat crazy personal risks uh, to promote what they're trying to do without necessarily thinking through the consequences of their actions. So I think, you know, you, you've got to have a, a balance there of, yes, you can go and do something new and new and different, but, you know, you shouldn't necessarily be starting a company and, and, and putting 50 grand in your credit card unless you, you know, have a really clear path to, 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 to getting to, to get into victory. I've seen one or two people for that who work out, but I've seen some other people have a very miserable time. What's a book that you recommend? Uh, so, I mean, there are so many great books. Um, you know, I hope everyone's read uh, both of the Eric Topol books, um, uh, you know, and The Patient Will See You Now, and uh, this is his latest, latest one. Um, the best two books, if you want a really thorough underpinning of American healthcare ever, are um, the trans social transformation of American medicine by Paul Starr, which explains where the American healthcare system came from in the 1870s and onwards. It's a bit of a bit of an academic tome, but it's actually pretty interesting because you miss out the first first part. Um, and a book written 20 years ago by my friend Michael Millinson called "Demanding Medical Excellence," which really explained the entire sort of quality revolution, and we're still fighting that at the moment. Uh, more recently, uh, Libby Rosenthal's book, An American Sickness, and Steve Brill's book, uh, A Bitter Pill, you know, are both very sober reflections on what's going, what's wrong with American healthcare right now. So, you know, there, there, there's tons you can read about it. Um, you know, there's been a lot of great, great books written, which always worries me because I haven't really written a book on this subject yet, and I need to. <laughs> so. So thank you for all those. We'll make sure we have links to all those in the show notes of this episode. What's a web-based or mobile software application that you wouldn't want to live without? Well, I mean, I think given the, the way I live and the way you live, Dan, uh, I would struggle to I would struggle to follow what's going on in the world without Twitter now. So Twitter, I think that'd be it. If I gave you a check for $5 million for you to invest in health technology today, how would you invest it? Uh, oh, $5 million? Well, that's not enough. But – um. I, I would put it, I think the biggest impact is coming from people who are reinventing primary care coaching online. So companies like Vida, uh, Vida Health, Verda, 
So somewhere somewhere in that in that realm and trying to change that. Maybe I would take my five million dollars and change it in one you know, go to one of these primary care systems and add that layer of, of virtual coaching onto them and see if we could change that. And last question is we make a contribution to a charity in appreciation of your time on the show. What charity have you selected and can you tell me a little bit about what they do? That's very, very generous of you guys. Um so I have many favorite charities, but my probably favorite one is called the Saigon Children's Charity, which is based in uh, uh, South Vietnam and some Vietnam and provides a combination of support to families and micro lending to help get kids, uh, poor kids, but girls primarily in school. Um, and I support several uh, um, I support several I sponsor several uh, girls for their for their for their families so they can go to school and uh, hopefully you can head into that. Absolutely. We'll do that. Saigon Children's Charity. We'll have a link to that in the show notes, and we will make a donation in your name if that's uh, allowed. Otherwise, we'll just make a donation. I'll let you know when that goes in. And uh, thanks for nominating them, and I think that's a great cause. I appreciate you you mentioning them. Uh, Matthew, how can people follow what you're up to and uh, get engaged with your work? Well, a couple of easy ways. Uh, they can follow at Bolty Boy. I'm on Twitter, B-O-L-T-Y-B-O-Y. Um, follow at health2con, health, the number two con that tells you about the health, health 2.0 conferences. Um, you can also follow at THCB staff, which is the, or go to the healthcareblog.com, which is, uh, news, views and opinions on healthcare published daily. Um, and, uh, they can, you know, obviously just, just track me. Well, that's the easy way to track me down. If you Google Matthew Holt, you usually, you get me eventually once you get past this rather good-looking young model. <laughs> so, yeah, who's also English. Also English and also has the same name as me. But it's, I used to be the first guy on, on Google, but now it's uh, now, now I'm, it's my image is, you know, you've got to look for the fat guy, not, not the thin guy. <laughs> all right. Well, Matthew, thanks a lot for taking all your time. Is there anything else you want to say to the listeners before I let you go? No, Dan, just a pleasure. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Uh, great podcast. Keep it up. I'm really uh, thrilled that you had me on. Look forward to seeing you soon, hopefully either over here or over there. And that brings us to the end of episode 41 with Matthew Holt. So what do you think? Smack Health? Are you convinced? S for social and sensors, M for mobile operating systems, A for analytics, C for cloud, and K for kindness? Well, I said I'd try it out, but I still prefer the term digital health. We'll be back to our normal name of our podcast on the next episode. Check out all the links to the things we discussed by visiting digitalhealthtoday.com forward slash 41 and from the first part of the conversation at digitalhealthtoday.com forward slash 40. I've got links on there to ZDogMD, Dave Chase, loads of events and opportunities to connect large corporates with startups, and of course links to Matthew Holt and his website, Twitter feed, LinkedIn profile, and more. I also have some videos from their conferences and some other talks on the show notes. While you're there, please take a minute to subscribe to the podcast using your favorite podcast apps. Be sure to also check out Medible.com and sign up for a demo of Axon. You'll be surprised at how fast you can create your first clinical trial app. Tell them you heard about it here. That's all from me for now. Until next time, keep on innovating.